Let's talk about words of the year for your business. So I've been excited to outline and record this one for a while. And honestly, back in January of this year, I thought I might do an episode about words for the year for your business, because this was something I obviously set up for myself, like, you know, in January of this year slash December of the previous year, but I never did. So I've alluded to it on this show so many times. If you're a regular listener, you've heard me talk about this, that I have had three words for the year for my business in 2023. I've even talked about this a little bit on other shows I've been interviewed on this year, but I've never told you guys what those words are, why I picked them, how this matters and how you can do the same. So now after a year of having words for the year for my business and really living them out and like implementing this and trying it for myself and then seeing them like constantly in my life, like be part of something I'm working with, I'm going to teach you how to do this as well. So as we think forward into the new year today, what I'm going to share with you is why you should do a word of the year for your business, what that even means, how to come up with yours, what my words, because I did have three, were for 2023, and then just some like really tactical ways that that impacted my business this year. Definitely will be doing it again for the next year as well, right alongside you. And then also uh, some tips around how to keep these words top of mind for an entire 365 days because it can be so easy to come up with our word of the year and then just completely forget about it. So those are some of the main things we're going to touch on and some more. So I hope you're as excited for this episode as I am. Let's get to it. Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth McCravey, a website designer and business coach for entrepreneurs and your host for the Breakthrough Brand Podcast, the show that's all about pulling back the curtain on how to actually build a successful business. I don't skim the surface around here. If you want a deep dive into the nitty gritty details of what it takes to run a successful business and stand out in a crowd, you're in the right place. After creating a multiple six-figure-a-year website design business in my 20s, I'm ready to share everything I've learned and everything I'm still learning because I believe the keys to building a thriving business should never be a secret. Here, you'll find episodes that are actionable, direct, and fun, like French chatting business over coffee and a fresh, honest take on the reality of being an entrepreneur. If you're ready to master online marketing, branding, website design, mindset, and business strategy, then this is the podcast for you. It's time to build your breakthrough brand. Let's do this. Okay, so let's start with why do a word of the year in your business. So word of the year is a thing that's been popularized gotten more popular, I would even think over the last few years as a thing as a part of goal setting. And it's seen as a personal life thing where like, you have a word for the year for your personal life. And people who are into goal setting to kick off a new year, especially are often setting some goals for the year, and then coming up with one word that they are going to use to define their year ahead. And I've done this for a really long time in my personal life. I mean, gosh, at least like, seven or eight years, if not longer than that. But I, and even one year I had a necklace made with my word of the year on it. Still love and wear that necklace from that year. But I really do personally love this stuff. And I've always seen it as something that is an important part of my personal life, an important part of my goal setting for the new year. But I had never done it for my business. And additionally, some years of my personal life, like I feel like the word kind of fell short, unfortunately, because I would come up with the word of the year and I would forget about it. Just to be completely honest, like at some point in the year, it can be easy to forget about, especially if it doesn't relate that well to what your goals are, which is something we're going to talk about. But I would forget about some years. So I've had years where it's like been like a really positive thing, like even the year I made the necklace with the word. And I've had other years where I'm like, I don't even remember what the word was because things were so crazy or I just wasn't really thinking about it. So anyway, I've liked doing it though in my personal life, but had never done it in my business. So let me just say real quick what a word of the year is though in some examples if you're still like, wait, what are you talking about? So it's basically a word that defines how you want to show up and how you want to live your life in the year ahead. That is my made up definition, not an 
official one. But some examples of words of the year that you might hear people say would be words like flourish, grounded, happy, adventure, brave, faithful, joyful, play, peace, rest. So those are some examples. And like maybe if your word for the year was play, then you might have goals around like things to do for fun that year and things to be more playful. Rest might be a year that you're stepping back from things and you might have goals around like less time on your phone or like less time doing, 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 you know, those sorts of things. So it relates back to your goals for the year. And I, again, this is a popular thing that we're about to see a lot of at this time of year of people being like, this is my word for the year and um, talking about and coming up with it as you're doing goal setting. But I don't ever really hear people talk about doing this for their business. So I'm like, am I the only one that's done this? I don't know. Maybe we need to make this episode more popular so other people can learn about it. But it's not something I hear people talk about doing for their business. Often though, it's that you as a business owner have a personal word for the year that will then carry over to your business as well. But I think that's a huge miss because my personal words of the year often have nothing at all to do with my business. Instead, it'll have to do with my motherhood, my marriage, my faith life, my health, things like that, not having to do with my work. So this year, I decided to make words for the year for my business that were actually, and I did multiple words, like I've already said, but that had literally nothing thing to do with the personal word for the year. Like they were literally completely unrelated things, but these were all words that I'm like working for in basically different capacities of my life. And like I said, I didn't stop at one word for the year for my business, which you totally could stop at one. We're going to talk about that, but I actually had three words for the year. So why do this though? Why have a word for the year for your business? I mean, this long and short of it is like business is separate from personal. You are not your business. And I think by saying that our word for the year is the same for both is making us like more a part of our business than we need to be. Your business is its own entity where it has its own goals. It has other people that maybe work for it besides you, but you are someone working in your business. You are not your business. And I also think that having words of the year in a business can help you have focus and direction as you make business decisions all year long. And that That was the biggest way this impacted me personally, because this was like a lens that I ran business decisions through as I like worked through all the different things that come up throughout a year. So now let me tell you what mine were and specifically some tips for coming up with yours. And then we're going to talk about like really integrating this into your business as well. So I would say you come up with this really the same way you would personal words of the year. Like for me, it was a very similar process. It's brainstorming, it's journaling, it's part of your goal setting and not separate from that. So that's a really important thing to remember. And I think that's what's going to make these words the most impactful is if they relate back to actual goals you have in your business for that year. And when I first came up with mine, it's really interesting actually for me to think about this, But I came up with them probably in December of the previous year and then, you know, really was like working them into things in January. And I did not share them all over the place. And I think subconsciously, when I really look at it, I never did a podcast episode sharing these words because they felt special and private to me somehow, even a bit secret that these are like the words I'm striving towards. And sometimes like, it's like you have this dream and a vision for something and like putting it out there too much feels like it can burst it and shatter it. And that is a little bit how I felt about these words, even though it's going to sound silly, especially when you hear what they were. But it was like, I just needed this to be for me and the people who were also working on these things with me. So like I said, I... I, kept it mainly to me, but I told some friends, especially some business friends. I told my husband, like, I remember literally going on a walk with him. One of the, I think the day I officially like declared, like, these are going to be the words. And I was actually struggling with like what the third word was going to be because I wanted to have some alliteration. But anyway, we were on a walk with Colin And we were talking about like, okay, what could the word be? Does this make sense? And like, here's why I'm picking these words. So I was telling him and my whole team knew, which was a really big piece of this. We had a literal meeting that revolved around these words. And I'm going to tell you more about that later too. But I wasn't like shouting it from the rooftops because I liked the privacy of it. So that's one thing I want to tell you too, as you dream this up and think about your own words for the year, whether it's business or personal, it doesn't have to be something you share with everyone. It doesn't have to be something you post an Instagram story about or do, you know, post your feed of like, this is my word for the year. It can just be something that's like just for you and for like the other people that are helping you work towards this. And again, I feel so funny sharing mine because it still feels like private to me. 
So <laughs> that's kind of weird, but I'm going to share with you anyway. So I want to tell you them now as an example, and I'm going to explain what they mean. But my words for the year, again, this is a very private thing I'm telling you, but they were templates, team, and traffic. And you might be like, Elizabeth, why does that feel so private? I don't know. It does though to me. But those are my three words. And you can see they had some alliteration to them, which was something that like the templates and team one just naturally had alliteration. And then traffic, really for me, that relates back to marketing, like the definition I would give that word in this context. And I chose the word traffic instead so that I could have the fun T alliteration. But in a few weeks, I'm going to do an episode, actually, it might be the week after this one, but recapping my year, just talking about, okay, what was 2023 like? what worked, what didn't, what did I do? What like wins did I see? What was hard? I love doing those kinds of episodes. I'm going to give you a really in-depth behind the scenes look at my business in that one. But when you hear that episode, you will literally, now that you know those words, be able to see big time, the huge part those words played in all the things that happened this year. Because Everything I did this year, just about, strategically fit into one of those words. So to tell you exactly what they meant, again, just really telling you all the things about what goes on in my mind and business goal setting. But templates, I wonder what that means. What, what could that mean for me? That obviously means my show it website template shop, which actually this year celebrated five years of having had it. And within that templates goal, I had a lot of goals around like some revamping to different elements of the template shop and also to making more templates. Like I had specific, especially add on templates. I'm like, I know I want to design this this year. And so we had a lot of goals around like the templates. So basically that being like a big focus in my business was a part of it. And did I get to everything I want to around the templates? No, I didn't because that's just the nature of it. Like there's so much that can be done there, but I did get through a lot of it. And then team, what does that mean? That one also feels pretty obvious perhaps, but for me that meant doing some hiring this year and also like better team communication, implementing some new systems, restructuring the way we did some things and like I don't know. I mean, I could do a whole episode about like team building. I actually have done lots of episodes about this, but about my own journey with it, because I feel like two of the hires I made more recently are some of the hardest hires to do in your business. And so it was like a bit of the, navigating that was just like its whole own thing of like, what should like, who is the right person to fill this? What should I be doing? What should they be doing? And that was a whole thing. So that was something that really liked to find the year as like the hiring of it and getting the systems going. And now that I also am looking to next year as like somewhat early in the year, starting a maternity leave because I am pregnant in due kind of end of February, beginning of March. So that's also where team's going to play a part. And so that's something else that like, I didn't even know when I said that word, but that like, as this year has come towards a close, it's been like more delegating and like, let's figure out like, okay, what's this maternity leave going to look like? Who's doing what? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to like, you know, teach this person, all those sorts of things. So anyway, that's that one. Interrupting this episode with a suggestion for the small business owners listening. Ever wonder what you should do for healthcare when you and your spouse are both self-employed so there's no work provided health insurance to participate in? Well, when my husband Adam joined me in the entrepreneurial job space over four years ago, we joined Christian Healthcare Ministries instead of getting traditional health insurance. And it was the best decision for us, especially in these years of growing and raising a family while also running multiple businesses. CHM is a health cost sharing ministry and is a faith-based alternative to health insurance. We did tons of research before choosing CHM. And if you know me and Adam, you know, we are all about doing the math when making big or small financial decisions. And even though it's not insurance, CHM shares 100% of eligible medical bills, which is more than the typical 70 or 80% of medical bills paid for by insurance companies. All sharing is determined by the CHM guidelines, which you can check out before and after joining. And for the mamas and mamas to be listening, you truly cannot find a better healthcare option for maternity care. I had a vaginal delivery and a C-section and birth center care and hospital care between my two pregnancies and births, and it was all 100% shared for. And outside of birth, we've had our share of emergency room visits and procedures as a family, and those costs were all shared by members at Christian Healthcare Ministries, leaving us only paying our monthly contributions. 
information. CHM is less expensive month to month than insurance, and because there's no network, you can choose your care with whichever providers best fit your family. I seriously just cannot recommend Christian Healthcare Ministries enough. You've got to check them out. Go to elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM for more information. Also putting that link in the show notes, elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM. Now back to the episode. As you dream and vision cast for your business in 2024, I would love to help you take things to the next level. Whether it's that you need a new website template to overall your online presence or a template to just add on to your existing show at website to spice things up a bit and make it better, my show it template shop can help. Or perhaps you're a designer who wants 2024 to be the year you really go for it and you hit those profit goals and client goals and social media goals, all the things you'll want to check out book.designer, which is my program for brand and website designers, all about building an in-demand design business. Or maybe for you, starting a podcast is on your 2024 goals list or scaling your podcast you currently have to be a bigger, more impactful part of your business. I'd love to help you with that too. My new course, Podcast Success Blueprint, which will be opening again in 2024, would be perfect for you. And of course, there's also Profit Sheet, my financial spreadsheet for organizing and tracking your finances as a service-based business. So basically, there's a lot of options and I'm here for you. And you can get the link to all these incredible products in the show notes and on elizabethmccravey.com. So I hope you'll check those out. And I can't wait to support you and your business in 2024. So now back to the episode. And then the word traffic for me really means visibility and marketing. So putting myself out there more and maybe saying yes to some things I would not otherwise. It also meant doing some different strategies on Instagram, getting on TikTok for the first time and things like that. So so that's kind of what they, what they meant for me. And I really want to encourage you. Don't just be like, those sounds like great words. I'm going to do those too. Choose your own based on your own goals for the year. And these really did relate to like, this is the vision and things I'm forecasting for my business. And so that's why I chose them. They did not just like come about because they all started with a T or something like that. It was like when I was literally looking at like, okay, what do I want to work on in the business this year? Those were like the things I wanted to work on. And there were three of them because businesses are so multifaceted and you're going to have different things. You're kind of like working towards at different times. So don't just do my words, but pick your own. But I do want to tell you those as like an example. And to kind of think about like, how do you come up with your own? Here are some questions I would ask yourself. At the end of the year, at the end of next year, where do you want your business to be at? Like literally just thinking one year ahead, what would be the biggest changes that you would like to have been through in that year period? Like what will be defining things that are maybe already on the calendar that are going to define that year? Like again, for me, just as an example, like I have not done it yet for 2024. Um, I'm recording this about a month before y'all are, we all will hear it. And I will actually be working on this when y'all are also working on this. Maybe I'll need to re-listen this episode for myself. But my year next year is going to be so different than this past year. Like literally, I'm going to be having two months and then having a baby. And I'm going to be taking a maternity leave. We're also not going to do childcare for the second baby at all for probably like a year. So my work life is just going to look a lot different. And so it's like these kind of goals, like the templates, team, traffic, like that's not going to be my goals for next year. So kind of thinking about like what's already on the agenda for you. And then also like what are big changes that you would like to have been through? in your business when you look at the end of the year. Like, so for me with this year, hiring was a big one. Like, I'm like, I want to look at myself in December at the end of this year and be like, I figured out these elements of hiring and this, my team looks like this. And so that's kind of why that became a word. And then also, what are the goals you have for the year already that you're thinking about? And again, this is part of your goal setting time. And then like what words sum up those goals? So again, it's not just like one sit down, I have my word, all of a sudden it can take time. I might have sat with this for like a month to like maybe a little less than that of like a few weeks. But again, this was part of my goal setting time. So it was like all happening together. Now I want to tell you just quickly, I could again, I could do a whole episode just on this, but how these words impacted my business for the year, which I will be talking about more in depth, even when I do that 2023 recap episode. But here are a few ways. First of all, I ran all of my goals and new ideas that happened as the year went on through these lens, because let's be real, you're going to start the year 
with some goals, but then like maybe by Q3, you have new ideas for whatever reason, things change and you can like only predict out so far. Like, you know, with people who have like this perfect, like 10 year business vision as a small business owner, I'm like, I don't know how you do it. Cause I don't know what even like, I don't know what things are going to look like at that point. Right. So like for you, maybe, you know, you thought you'd spend five months trying to get your new Instagram strategy figured out or onboarding that new team member. And then it actually took you way longer to hire, or, you know, maybe you thought it was going to take you two months to make your new product, but it actually takes you one or whatever it is. It happens faster, happens slower, but like say things happen faster and now you have more more capacity. It's like, now what? These words help you with the now what? Because you're like, this is what I've kind of declared as like what I'm doing this year. Also, all year long, you will be hit with opportunities that are not all opportunities. Because opportunities at the wrong time and the wrong type of opportunity for the wrong person can simply be distractions. You guys have heard me share this quote by James Clear, where he said, success generates opportunities and distractions. And I think sometimes an opportunity is literally just a distraction in disguise, disguised with a pretty bow and calling it an opportunity. So whether or not it's an opportunity or distraction literally depends on your goals. So what might be an opportunity for your other business friend over here might actually be a distraction for you because y'all are in different seasons and you have different goals and you have different businesses. So that was like a huge way these words played a part for me because I was looking at like, all the quote unquote opportunities this year and be like, is that an opportunity or is it a distraction? How does that fit into my capacity? And also how does it fit into these goals for the year? So just to like, just tell you briefly, I've been on about 20 podcasts this year. Not all of them have aired yet, but I've literally recorded 20 interviews on other people's shows this year. I actually recorded one literally right before doing this episode for you guys. And I have more on the calendar before the year ends. I've spoken at one in-person event. I've taught two live webinars for software companies. I did one for Dubsado and one for Show It this year where I was teaching on different topics that like they came to me with. That was a really fun collaboration, but also a lot of work. I've also done two summits and I have a third one that I'm about to be working on. So it'll end up being three, but that's all in the name of that being a goal for me this year. Those things all relate back to that traffic goal. And if traffic is not my goal for the year, then those might have actually been distractions. It might have been that like, no, Elizabeth, you've been on enough podcasts this year. Like you don't have time for that. You need to say no to that. I can go ahead and tell you next year, I will probably be saying less yeses to like online summits because I will have less capacity depending on what they are. So like things like that, it's just like you're running the opportunity, so to speak, through the lens of these words. And sometimes even it isn't a distraction. It really is an opportunity, but you still don't have capacity because of other things. That's something else that like, as I'm thinking about my year, I think of a few times where it's like, oh, that actually was a really good opportunity for me, but I couldn't do it for whatever reason of like, just, you know, the amount of work hours I have, the other things I'm already doing and things like that. But anyway, that's, that's just some like simple ways that these words impacted my business. But I think the biggest one that I want you to take away as you think about this is that like, yes, these are the words that you're going to make your goals around for the new year, but also when you've hit those goals or when you've changed your mind about the goals, because it's okay to change your mind. You might think you want to do something in your business and then you get to doing it and you're like, wait, this doesn't make sense. But these can be words that you're kind of running through like, okay, does this make sense for my business? So now lastly, to close this out, how do you make these words be something that when April rolls around, you actually can remember what they are because you've been living them and thinking about them throughout versus it being like, hey, it's April. And you're like, what was my word of the year for my business? I don't even know. How do you do that? And first of all, this will happen sometimes. Like you might end up this year being like, oh wait, like that is what happened to me. I forgot it. Maybe you forgot your word for the year from this previous year. But these are some things, because I've I've done that too, right? I was just telling you guys how like I have done personal words for the year that I forget. But these are some things that this year specifically, when I think about how like, oh my gosh, these words were like on my brain all year long. These are things that help me. So first thing is setting goals to revolve around the words. So every single business goal I made for the year fell under one of these words. These were like the top line categories 
that all my business goals fell into. And so because of that, it was not random and it helped me remember it easily. Telling your team is another big one. So having a team meeting where you vision cast and talk about the words, what the goals are, what they mean, and have your team really help you remember. Like we had some conversations um, as like with individuals on the team where I, you know, have to express like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this thing, but like I don't really know if it fits into our goals for the year and like making decisions about it with that being true. So like, I think talking to your team about it is really, really helpful. And I have an episode I'm going to record for you guys coming in a few weeks where I'm going to talk about how to do a beginning of the year team meeting with your team to do this sort of things like that is coming. But I just think that's hugely impactful. Another thing I think that's helpful is telling other people. So in addition to your team telling other people, as it comes up naturally in conversation, because this kind of thing will and letting it be something you speak out loud, but you can also hold it tenderly close to you as well, which I've done a mix of both. And the last one that I think is probably the most important is putting it the words where you can see them in your office, maybe in another space in your home, maybe in your car, I don't know, but wherever is somewhere that will you will see them and make you think of them. So for me, I have these three words, I literally wrote them in December of last year, and they have not been erased. So this might actually be that they are permanently stuck on my dry erase board now. As I think about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's probably gonna be hard to erase. But in blue, dry erase marker, I have these three words and my personal word for the year written on the dry erase board. And literally, as I'm sitting at my desk and looking straight ahead, I see those words. And I did not write them in some cool calligraphy or really pretty or special. It's literally just written there in my normal, not that great handwriting, but I'm seeing it every day that way. You could also do sticky note that you like are putting somewhere in your desk or on your mirror. You could write it on the outside of your journal. I think that could be really cool. Like if you have a journal or planner, maybe in one of the pages or on the outside of it, writing the word there. You can make it your computer or phone background. That's something you often see people do with their personal word for the year, but you could do that same thing for your business word or words for the year. You can also make it your passwords. That's a cool idea. So that's something like, you know, maybe there's a password that you're like, I need to change it because it's you know not that secure anymore and you're needing to change it anyway. It's when you type in often, making it your word or words of the year is a cool way to like bring it to yourself so you don't forget it. So those are a few ways and there's more, like as I just said, those, you probably thought of a different space in your own home and in your own life that you could put these business words of the year. So do that, like put it somewhere again, that you are going to see it and remember it and then use it as the lens that you're running your decisions through all year long. So that is it. And I hope this convinces you to choose a word for the year for your business and not just your personal life. And maybe this also will be the first year that you choose one for your personal life as well. If so, I think that's amazing. But yeah, I really hope this episode helps you. And like I said, I'm going to be back. I think I'm actually doing it next week, but with an episode where I'm going to share my 2023 and review what worked, what didn't, tips I've learned from my own business that can help you in 2024. So yeah, come back next week for that one. And I hope you are enjoying the Christmas holiday season so far. If you missed last week's episode where I recasted the Christmas episode from last year, go listen to that because that's really fun and can get you in the Christmas spirit. But yeah, I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me kind of nervously tell you my own words of the year from this year and cheers to us all setting words for the year for 2024. So I'll be back next week. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode all the way until the end. I appreciate you being here. And if you enjoyed this episode, then I want to invite you to check out my website template shop too. Over on elizabethmccravey.com, you'll find show it website templates that are easy to use, strategically designed, and created to help you book more clients and customers. Maybe your current website is really boring. Maybe it's a challenge to update. And maybe even it's that thing that you really feel like is just completely holding your business back. Your website needs to be strategically and intentionally designed in order for it to convert your viewers into raving customers. And that's exactly what my M shop templates do. So these are pre-made show it website templates where you can plug and play your content into it with ease and then get started with a website that's designed to actually help you make more money. These templates are designed to be SEO friendly on the back end, and they're not just pretty, but they are very strategic. And with all the strategies I teach on this podcast, and best of all, they're easy for you to set up all by yourself. 
So shop them at elizabethmccravey.com slash shop and come join the M Shop family of hundreds of happy customers. And as an added perk, you can use the code BB podcast at checkout to get 10% off any template as a thank you for being a part of the podcast family. So that's BB podcast for 10% off any template over at elizabethmccravey.com. And if you love this podcast, don't forget that you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts so that you never miss an episode and leave a rating and review for the show wherever you're listening. Share it with a friend, share it on Instagram or Facebook. That's a great way to support the podcast and get the word out. All right, I'll be back next week with another new episode.